Please welcome Steve Alperin, co-founder and CEO of SurvivorNet. Good afternoon, thanks so much for being here. Um, I'm Steve Alperin and the co-founder of SurvivorNet along with Tim Langloss. And we are so grateful to be part of this with The Atlantic again this year. They program these things as thoughtfully and as carefully and with love as any, any conference I've ever been part of, so thank you. Um, for those of you who were meeting for the first time, SurvivorNet is now the leading media company in the country purely focused on cancer information. We're very proud of it. It's very personal for me. Um, like a lot of people in this room, I lost my dad uh, some years ago, um, and our family didn't really get to the right places. My mom is here. She's been practicing law for 60 years, and there's not a lot of walls she doesn't drive through for her family. Cancer was one of them. And we kept meeting people in our family and meeting people like our family, and so I decided to do something about it. Um, in the last year, we feel grateful to have reached millions of people who are hungry, like a lot of people here today, hungry for better information about cancer. The thing that really sticks out to us and that stays with me is the stories of courage and hope. Um, and if you'll indulge me for a moment, I'll tell you a story. Last year after the conference, I was uptown at the plaza and I was standing in the lobby and a woman tapped me on the shoulder and her name was Jessica Malore. And I, she introduced herself and there was something about her. She was radiant in a way that was not normal. And I was trying to say to myself, who is this person who is so happy to be here? And I'm looking at a, at a friend of mine in the audience who there was something about her that was amazing. Um, she just passed away and the world lost someone incredible. I talked to her mom last night and I was somewhat reluctant to mention it, except that I think I wanted to start the afternoon, and all of us wanted to start the afternoon, by honoring um, Jessica and honoring folks like her. And the thing that really stayed with me about her is she had a remarkable way of turning extraordinary hardship into opportunity and hope. Um, please, could we roll the tape? I believe that you can choose to live in fear or you can choose to live your life. My name is Jessica Malore and I am a three-time cancer survivor. When I was 16 years old, I was co-captain of my high school tennis team. I was a senior. One night I was out at a restaurant with my family and I started to feel dizzy and lightheaded. And when that subsided, I felt pressure pains going from my chest to my neck and heaviness in my arms. When I initially woke up, I had no idea what had happened to me, and I was told that I would need a heart transplant in order to move on with my life. I was living on this experimental heart assist device, and so I was determined to reclaim my life. That same week, I had to have my left leg amputated because I'd gotten an infection in my leg, and it came down to a matter of my leg or my life. And I returned to school, after nine long months, I finally received my life-saving heart transplant a few days before high school graduation. The timing of the transplant was perfect in that it allowed me to attend Princeton University on time three months later. And then the summer after freshman year, I felt a lump on my neck about the size of a quarter. I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and I was in complete remission by the end of that first semester of sophomore year. Six and a half years after the first lymphoma, I felt another lump on my neck. And after eight months of treatment, I was again in remission. Eight years after my second bout of cancer, I needed to have a total laparoscopic hysterectomy. I've learned never to take my health for granted. So I don't believe in living in fear. It has encouraged me to live life with certain vividness, to pack my schedule of things and do as many things as I can, uh, to make m the most out of life, but also to have the biggest impact that I can have on the world. Because I saw how sharing my journey could help other people, no matter what they had been through in their lives, and giving them a sense of hope and strength and awareness about different issues. Um, not only talking about overcoming adversity, uh, but seeing a challenge and how it could be an opportunity for you to make something positive out of your life.
Jessica was so full of hope. I, I think I was a little reluctant to maybe do this and show that, but it's so important that we remember her. And I think that the hope that she talks about, um, it does need to be grounded in reality and grounded in science. And I think what's really extraordinary and grounded in the sadness uh, that I have in my family and so many of us, but what's really extraordinary about working in and around cancer these days is that it's not optimism entirely, that the hope is grounded in what I like to call a slow motion scientific revolution of about a decade. Some of the people who are leading that are here today. Um, and so I think the, the really best thing that about these kinds of gatherings is that we can get together to move the ball forward a little bit, to understand the science, um, and to have the community together. And most importantly, to let people know, the, the most important people, the patients, that they're not alone. So thank you so much. I hope the afternoon is really interesting. I really appreciate being here. Thanks.